But first, I'd like to ask for, and I don't often do this, but I'd like to ask for a big round of applause for our first speaker, the founder of our movement, the man with whom none of us would be here, Paul Kurtz. have a question first and then a statement. Question for every member of the audience. Have you made your contribution yet to this organization? Because you need to. You know, uh, money is the root of all evil, yes. But no money is worse. <laughs> and the growth of this movement since 1990, as Barry Cosman of Attitudes in the Country pointed out, I think we've had a modest effect in that by showing that unbelievers could be good citizens, contribute to uh, the world, and uh, lead dignified lives, and that's very, very important. So the, the Center for Inquiry will con can continue this great educational work. Now, there have been stories in the in Los Angeles Times that many people have asked me about that, and the New York Times in the last few days. Here's one in the Los Angeles Times. It's LA. My great hero, in a very modest way for myself, is Socrates. He was a gadfly. So let me play the role of the gadfly. The story in the, in the Los Angeles Times says, there's been a rift within the Center for Inquiry. That rift cracked open recently when Paul Kurtz, a founder of the Secular Humanist Movement in America, was ousted as chairman of the Center for Inquiry, a organization of the Council for Secular Humanism. One factor leading to this ouster was a perception that Kurtz was on the and this is quoting Thomas Flynn, was on the mellowing side of the movement. The tension was evident here at the Biltmore, and two reporters, one for the New York Times and one for the Los Angeles Times, are covering this, this convention. The second quote from the New York Times said, the center's donations have fallen since Mr. Kurtz Depart, Mr. Kurtz's departure, which prompted warring blog posts between his defenders and Mr. Lindsay's. And uh, this did not improve on Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Kurtz, uh, because the center's donation had declined, but on Wednesday, uh, Mr. Kurtz stopped by the center in Amherst, where he still keeps an office he found that the locks had been changed. Mr. Lindsay told the reporter that Mr. Kurtz did not need the new key because he has no connection with the center. Well, I beg to differ. I have an emotional and uh, I have an emotional and personal and long-standing connection to the center. And so I think that it's very, very important that each and every one of you contribute. We're a very modest movement. We provide a civilized and sophisticated response to the religiosity in the United States. And this movement can only continue to grow if you contribute. So if you've not contributed, my question to each and every one of you is contribute something. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kurtz, for uh, your generous encouragement and contributions to this organization. It's deeply appreciated. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of things that uh, Paul brought up in between his encouragement of donations to this organization. He referred to articles in the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times. I have not had an opportunity to look at the LA Times article, so I won't comment on that. Uh, 
Paul indicated that in one of the articles that uh, he was ousted as chair. I think he alluded to the fact that there were some differences of opinion that may have led to his ouster, maybe philosophical differences. Actually, his ouster as chair, which occurred at a June 2009 board meeting, uh, resulted from uh, essentially an ultimatum that Paul Kurtz presented to the board, which was that either the structure of the office of CEO had to be refashioned in such a way that significant responsibilities were to be taken away from the CEO, or he no longer wanted to remain as chair. Given that choice, the choice that Paul Kurtz presented, the board decided that fine, he will no longer remain as chair. Uh, with respect to this whole key issue, which I know has gotten quite a bit of play, the situation is this. Paul Kurtz, in mid-May of this year, in uh, something that was really quite a surprise to the organization, surprise to me, surprise to all the members of the board, decided on his own to resign from all his positions with all the organizations, that is, the family of organizations that's associated with the Center for Inquiry. That's the Council for Secular Humanism, the Center for Inquiry, the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. He resigned from his position as editor-in-chief. In fact, he told Tom Flynn he didn't want anything more to do with the magazine. So, as a factual matter, as of that point in time, indeed, he had no connection with the organization because he had renounced the organization. And as everyone knows, uh, Paul mentioned this in his opening address, he went on to found another organization, which of course it's his right to do. Uh, despite the fact that he has no ongoing connection with the center, we have uh, allowed him to use his former office at the center. Uh, he is the only guest at the center that has a reserved parking spot. And as far as I'm concerned, he can continue to use that reserved parking spot. He can continue to use his former office. I can tell you right now, I will never use that office, have no desire to use that office. Uh, we did change the exterior locks on our building for a number of reasons. We'd had some security problems at guest houses nearby. Uh, Barry Carr and I also talked about the fact that the exterior locks had not been changed, I believe, ever. And we have had employee turnover, not just in recent years, but actually going back a number of years. Uh, there's been probably, I think, in Paul's last few years, uh, there were 45 employees that left between 2005 and mid-2008. And since then, we've probably had another 20 employees leave. So just as a matter of prudence, it made sense to change the exterior locks. Then the decision had to be made, well, do we give Paul Kurtz a new key? We decided not to give him a new key. Why? Well, Paul can visit our building anytime there's any member of staff present. Uh, and he has told me that he would like to continue to visit our building. Happy to have him. We recognize Paul Kurtz as the founder of this to the Council for Secular Humanism, the founder for the Center for Inquiry, the founder for CSI. I have never said anything uh, that would indicate that we don't have a great deal of debt to Paul Kurtz for everything he's done for this movement. Indeed, we do. We would not be here without Paul Kurtz, and we all recognize that. And if he wants to visit staff at the center, he's welcome to visit staff at the center. The only thing not having a key to the exterior locks does not allow him to do is to be in the building by himself after hours. And if he wants to visit staff at the center, that wouldn't seem to impede him in any way from doing that. Uh, as I said, uh, he can come to the center, we're open during business hours, and he's more than welcome to continue to visit us and to converse with our staff about the greater good that we can do and uh, the mission of humanism and how we can promote humanism and skepticism.